is an article that got me a little bit riled up a little bit i don't really agree with this but i'm gonna read it anyway it's from mix mag um and it touches upon the idea of uh somehow being able to distribute wealth or income um that's generated from the dance music scene whether it's from club gigs or whatever it may be or live streaming events to producers and djs that are lower down the totem pole right the idea or the kind of perception is that most of the money is concentrated at the top right the main apex the main point where all the big let's say the top 20 ra djs of our kind of place production teams labels uh, uh promotions uh pl- live streaming platforms they all kind of operate that top 10 five percent and they kind of hoard most of the cash quote unquote if you, if you kind of or if you believe um this uh, presumption presented here by mix mag and most people on the scene and then everybody else is kind of fighting for scraps so they uh, this kind of article is uh kind of pushing this fee sharing model where you essentially take the you know 50 grand some big dj will get paid and somehow if they play a particular track from an artist that artist is, is is entitled to get a portion of that 50 grand because obviously they're contributing to that event i don't agree with it but you know that's the premise that is on there so let's read the entire article and i can kind of go through some of my thoughts and feelings behind it but i'm not really a fan of the whole um socialism approach to electronic music um it's not really necessary really considering that the reason why it's like this at the moment is because the model's broken and there's some parts and there's some accountability need to be taken from the players in it who have got it this way in order to change things as opposed to going after the big djs who are earning the money that you know they're rightfully earned or that you know the market dictates that they get let's fix the system first so that we don't have a we don't have a platform where you know this person's getting 50 grand and then the person underneath is getting 10 the disparity is too much especially when for the most part especially if you've been in this i've been in this i've been doing it for 10 years um i know from my own self like being honest like there's not really much separating a lot of the bigger djs to the ones just below them there's not much of course there's a lot separating your bar person to like somebody that plays at a festival plays at normal plays at big clubs cool but from the the top ones from the top 20 ra voted to maybe the ones from 21 under to probably 50 there's not much separating them in terms of ability wise in terms of talent in terms of uh, in terms of uh taste in terms of reading a room in terms of maybe appeal there's not much separating them i'm assuming the top ones are let's say like a ricardo villalobos if you get him to play in the fucking in a shed somewhere in the middle of forest gate that thing's gonna get sold out there's people that move tickets and that perform on a high level but mostly everyone's sort of playing on an even playing field but this is the article here from mix mag it says the following uh headline should a free sharing model be enforced in dance music enforced as well i'm not liking that term that's a little bit um or for authoritarian really and um, we don't want that so so following um it's becoming recently impossible for producers to earn a sustainable income from making music and while the events industry is struck currently on hold dj fees have been scaling to iowa and heights in recent years now firstly i don't agree with that statement i think increasingly impossible is something that could apply for all digital all kind of creative endeavors on the internet right because the internet democratizes everything right you can now because of the internet i can effectively put out an ep put out an album uh put out a video edit put out a live stream put out a mix that could essentially if i put out enough of them and i do enough work i could potentially be on the same um, lineup as a seth troxler right just because of the internet back in the day if i wanted to do that i'd have to press a dub plate I'd have to buy the equipment, right? I'd have to uh, buy a really expensive computer, really expensive gear, sometimes analog gear. I'd have to learn an instrument. I'd have to have contacts at the record stores. But now I could just submit my stuff. I could even just upload it on SoundCloud. I don't even submit it. Maybe have people uh, talk about it on social. It gets picked up by a label who contacts me via Instagram and then suddenly now I'm the next big thing. So that affects everybody. It's not just to do with production, not just to do with electronic music scene. Everyone's kind of feeling that digital squeeze. But again, I still think the cream rides to the top because there's more competition out there. You have to raise your game. You have to come with something different. You have to come with something unique. Um, you can't just, you know, phone it in like people did maybe in the past when it was a little bit more easier to do or a little bit more harder to do. It made that less people were doing it. Sorry. So it continues here. So DJing, of course, is a skill that should be valued. Anyone who has ever watched their favorite DJ set uh shred so i can attest to this however the current global royalty system largely unfit for purpose should be looking at a radical way new ways of ensuring electronic music makers are compensated from fairly for their time and craft i agree with that one 
Uh, it says here, dark music sphere has come to mirror societies in which it resides, and the wealth divide between the world's highest paid DJs and the global underground community is a gaping chasm that continues to widen. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think underground DJs should try and get paid like someone that's playing that. Let's say I don't know, Awakenings or somebody that's playing it. I don't know what big festivals are. They shouldn't be thinking that because the whole reason why you're underground is because you have the ability to play for a, probably a little bit more of a discerning crowd. The, the spaces are more interesting you probably play more regularly i'll assume right because those events only happen those kind of um awakenings and those other things only happen during a particular time of the season but if you're an underground dj who's fairly good and has a good following you could be playing all year round all over the world right you have maybe you don't pick up 10 grand a set but you might pick up your 200 euros 500 euros every single weekend doing you know essentially pressing pause pressing cue and play for tracks that you didn't make is a pretty decent salary of course compared to david Guetta, it isn't fair enough but do you want to be david Guetta? do you want to be playing that kind of music do you want to be on a private plane um do you want to have the pressures of uh trying to live up to the expectations of a commercial audience do you want all that that is not the same level of kind of um that's not the same level of work needed really in it so the the, the pay is a bit is is probably appropriate to the level that you're working at because there's some there's some commitments that come with being David Guetta that probably a lot of underground DJs wouldn't want to do anyway, regardless of how much they were getting paid. So I don't really see that correlation there. And it says, it says the following: In 2019, the chain smokers took more than 46 million. Marshmallow racked up a juicy 440 million, and David Guetta lined his pockets with a modest 18 million. These are all the mainstream DJs with few or, f or no ties to the DIY dance music communities pushing electronic music forward. But as we discussed last year, what happens when Apex Twin plays a track by a left field club artist in his set? Should we share some of its essential performance fee with the artist? That is a stupid correlation. To sometimes suggest Apex Twin is anything like David Guetta or Marshmallow or Chainsmokers is nutty. The Apex Twin is nothing like that. Apex Twin actually comes from the underground. It's probably one of the few artists that have been able to pop in the mainstream, maintain some kind of level of integrity, dignity, not sell out, which is, you know, it's a bad term anyway, but he hasn't sold out in the conventional terms and been able to take his, um, his brand of underground electronic dance music to the mainstream without being, without compromising too. He does it on his own terms, right? Sometimes it's been rumored that he's not even him playing on the fucking stage at most of the occasion. You've seen him playing fucking white noise for an hour. It's him just having these amazing lighting effects and you know putting out random eps of stuff he recorded 10 years ago like he's just doing things at a really high level he's really representing us underground the music fans in the right way to suggest that he that him playing a track by an underground artist is exploitation or that whatever is ridiculous because part of the reason why an underground artist part of the reason why that would be a good thing is because you're an underground artist and some mainstream guy who comes from your scene is playing your stuff is good how how comfortable would you be if you're an underground music producer and David Guetta played your stuff anyway? Would you like that? You probably wouldn't. You'd end up like most one-hit wonder people, right? Who, especially in the dance music scene, I, I think of, um, who, who can I think of? I think of maybe Danny Days, maybe is a good example. Somebody who made a track that happened to blow but didn't represent anything that they actually are into. That's sometimes they can get caught in, right? Uh, Major and Coles is something like that, right? What they say isn't something that she probably wanted to do her entire career, but it happened to pop, and now suddenly you're having to make a, a different alias so you can play other kind of music. So people aren't expecting that same kind of techie house, deep house sort of feel. It's a two-edged sword, isn't it? Like, and I don't necessarily think it's a fair comparison to compare Apex Twin to David Guetta. They're different levels. They're, di they're different groups, different levels. It's just a whole different thing. But anyway, let's continue. It says, although the vast majority of DJs and artists unanimously agree that producers should receive a certain amount if the major artist plays a track, the practicalities of fee sharing are messy and unrealistic. DJs, because it's a quote, DJs making high four to low six digits, Apex Twin, etc. Again with Apex Twin, man, Jesus Christ. He doesn't get any respect from Mix Mag, innit? And imagine the people they promote on here and they give him Apex Twin stick. Really? Like, come on. While playing the music to others to is highly problematic, even though for many folks these are the only types of gigs that they will help them eat it's odd to bind it's odd to bind to be and says i've got a pop artist la 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 fa wadna la fa wadna i don't know how you pronounce it um i like the idea behind it but it's just really where do you enforce it offers berlin based dj dj zero uh, fee sharing it's fair though it's a fair fall and it would be nice but how many rich people are sharing their resources not enough cool 
but also should they i don't think so and again let's 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 step away and kind of treat dance music as a a utopian sort of like ideal of how you know the wider public should kind of deal with things yeah we have different clubs different niches different communities different subcultures for different things you don't necessarily get what you get at fabric in fold you don't necessarily get what you get at berg kind of about blank right they serve different audiences they provide different things and they do a hell of a job at it so they sh- and again they pay accordingly judged by what kind of gates they get in blah 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 whatever maybe i think the problem is not that these producers aren't getting the opportunity to get any sort of feeds from the bigger djs who are playing the music the problem is that most of these mid-level low-level clubs haven't got especially the ones outside of berlin for the most part outside of germany don't have a system or don't have a residency program that allows local artists up and coming producers to play on a weekly basis so they can build their own name right so they can make their own you know income on a on a kind of consistent basis get their name out so that when that big person does play a record someone's got a reference of where you play and where you're at because most of the times these big people who are playing these records from underground people they're playing records from people that don't, haven't played a set in a club before, right? And then they suddenly get propped because that tune blew up. They get booked to play a gig somewhere and they fall flat on their face because they haven't played regularly enough. And then suddenly now the gigs dry up because the good thing about electronic music is that if you do make a track that blows, usually, or that pops in the mainstream or that gets some sort of attention, usually people give you an opportunity to play. You come in, oh, sick, you're that guy that made that song. Come play at my club. I, I think you got good taste because you made that song. That's the assumption that you have, which makes sense, isn't it? If somebody makes a good painting, if somebody paints an amazing canvas or paints an amazing landscape, an amazing still life, an amazing portrait, you would assume they are able to maybe replicate that, right, in some way, shape, or form. So if you're a producer and you make a really good track, uh, it's, fair to me, it's fair of me to assume that maybe you might be good at selecting tunes. Now they get there and because they haven't been able to play, because again, playing at home, you know, even if you're live streaming it is one thing, but being able to play consistently in a bar, in a club, especially somewhere where you've got a guaranteed audience who are able and willing to accept the stuff that you're playing, you've got a captive audience, is really important for people coming up, especially the low to mid-level people. They need that platform so that they have the practice so that if the big clubs start calling and start wanting you to play because your track was played by an Apex Twin, you have the ability to kind of build on that platform as opposed to this person plays your song they go to your soundcloud and they see that you've last uploaded something a year ago because you got this disillusioned and you just got a normal job so the problem is in it's in it's, in, it's attached to the clubs and the infrastructure around it because they're so desperate to get ricardo available to play every single weekend your local producer your person up and coming can't play those sets those peak hour events or they're always doing a warm-up or they're always doing the clothes when all, everyone's left you need to get those people playing in your mid to low level clubs in order to supplement or in order to support the stuff that's going on in the big leagues. You can't expect those big people to kind of pass the money down to people who, what is the, what is the use of that even, right? If I'm fee sharing and I'm at the top, what, what's the benefit of this? What's gonna happen? It's not doing anything. It's still not allowing them to make more music. It's still not allowing them to play out to public. It's not allowing them to rebroadcast their message louder enough. It just doesn't make any sense. It's sort of similar to like, imagine if somebody, I don't know, you're a young influencer, you've got a brand, and somebody, what, what if somebody was like, I don't know, what, what, what do you fee share with people online on social media when they promote something? You're just thankful that they credited you. Like if someone used a picture, oh, just credit me and tag me in the thing so that people can follow me on my Instagram. You're not expecting to get a profit share out of the clicks that they got on their YouTube video or AdSense. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, continues here. It says, um, for London's Paris, who makes music as well as DJing, it says the issue is also a complicated one. Ruminating on the idea of fee sharing or of playing, of paying a fee of global database tracks, he hints at a potential of a DJ eat will eat itself type of situation. He said artists could just end up playing a set of all their own tunes, which is true, which means that they'll just end up playing themselves. So I'm not sure how realistic this uh, idea is, which is it's just not realistic. Like I don't like it is. It would be it's a uh, it would be a fantastic, fantastical idea, right? In an ideal situation, you would like that. But again, I just don't see how that works. I just don't see how it works. I think it's more likely that you'd get, it's more, there's more, um, there's more chance for the scene to grow and for people to develop as artists if they're able to have a platform to play more often, not to have to handouts from the bigger people up top. It doesn't make any sense. 
But anyway, read the article yourself as a whole article. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I think I've got my point across. You know where I stand on this for the most part. But the title of this is called Should a Free Sharing Model Be Enforced in Dance Music? Check it out. It's by a writer called April Claire Welsh. Again, it's well written. She gets her point across well, but I just fundamentally don't agree with it. Um, I think it's the same thing where I don't agree with the idea of having uh, 50 50 splits on lineups in terms of gender. I, I want to see more equal representation on lineups, but I don't want to see people just given slots because they happen to be of a certain, you know, uh, color, creed, uh, gender. It doesn't make any sense, right? You want people to be on there by merit. And the problem isn't the lineup, is the problem is the promoters who are putting the lineup together. They're not putting the lineup together. They're not taking chances. They want to do the safe option and book, you know, five versions of Mesa Plex in every kind of event. I love the guy, but come on, right? Instead of going out and actually plucking people out from the scene who are playing people who are up and coming and getting them on the on the lineup to be more effective because i don't think people have a, a problem if it's an all-male lineup as long as there's people that are up and coming that you've heard on the you've heard on a grapevine that you've kind of discovered through a subreddit you discovered through a forum or a facebook group that's more interesting as opposed to seeing the same person play at seven events seven times in a row and it's usually the same sort of music nothing really changes that's not what you want to see the way that the scene grows is by the promoters taking chances but if they just say i'm going to split the lineup 50 50 what end up happening they just end up picking this the same issue happens you, you just end up paying, picking from the top 10 female DJs in the scene you put them on there and then still the girls that are like position 20 downwards are still going to complain because they haven't got the space to play because those same girls get picked again and again so you're just repeating the same um mistakes and the same missteps that happen you know usually now i, I just i don't know again i hopefully there's another model for it but i just think it's the, the industry needs to take a hard look at itself especially the promoters especially the event managers especially people that book people or the agents or whatever they may be they need to look a little bit more deeper and try things out of the box and allow them to do that because again I, I don't necessarily see the point of booking a big person to go play a lion lamb for instance right like that kind of pub right in old street it's a pub that got what maximum 250 capacity people in there why would you need to pick someone that's been featured in the ra to play there pick somebody that's up and coming to play there weekly to play there once every once the third saturday of the month every single month right that will so they can build an audience they can build a way of playing they can you know i don't know cultivate a little scene a little community so that every every third friday you know when to go you know when to hang out as opposed to booking some big dj who doesn't really care about it takes a booking fee doesn't retweet or share the fucking flyer and then you end up on an event that you're paying out of pocket for just so you can say you got Craig Richards to play there. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, I recommend you check out the article itself and see what they're saying.